After teaching for 25 or 6 years, I was approached by one of my administrators, Liz Nevels, to help her out and teach a preschool class of eight children. I needed to enlist the parents, and I needed the parents to come because the kids were four or five years old. They would never remember what I needed them to learn. In some instances, I had aunts that would come in. In some instances, I would have a grandparent come in. And it just kind of mushroomed from that year on. And for the last 10 years, that's what I've been doing. The requirement was for the parent to come in at least once, once a week to, to sit in on a class. Ms. Fraterni said, well, since we were there, the parents, we could go ahead and learn ourselves. So I thought that would be a great idea to start to have something that Charity and I could share together to do. It's really been helpful for us together because, I mean, especially when he has these little concerts, we get to spend that time together. I come down and I, you know, come with him and I'm able to enjoy watching him play. From the beginning when she started, like I said, she was very uh, introverted. But now she's uh, very talkative, very confident, because she does play the violin so well now. We're all very proud of her. My kids play for Christmas dinners, Thanksgiving dinners, when people come over. She's good at school, but this has given her that drive because she's getting that, I mean, she has learned that drive from playing the violin. When I didn't have instruments, I figured out a way to get instruments from the community. I went on radio, somebody wrote a press release, I had donated instruments that were exqui so expensive that I just brought right into the school. She encourages the children so much and that's, that's the wonderful part about it. She does so much for the children and she does so much to keep them involved. You know, even when they try to slip away, you know, she makes those calls to the house and just lets you know that, you know, that you need to have them practice a little more. Their parent invested in time, in money, and in practicing. And it's made an incredible difference. It pulls them. It pulls them in another direction and gives them something more than just, I want to go on a playground, I want to go with this friend or go with that friend. It gives them more something to look forward to, to do with their life when they get older. And that's what I love. The parents buy into the process, literally and figuratively. It became their property and they treated it differently, much differently. Uh, the, kids, the, the kids would come to school, they certainly would have their instrument. Now, at this stage that they're at, they do it on their own, and it's, it's beautiful. The practices are not about learning the notes and, and all of that to me now. It's just about just having, some, having fun, because I, I enjoy playing the violin, and she does too. I taught the kids to really love music. I teach them songs that they can recognize right away. I make it easy enough just I bring it right down to the, to, the, to the element of playing the song. They don't have to really know what the name of the note is. People look at black kids and say, violin, cello, yes, we can do that if we are exposed to it. My students don't see me as being white. In fact, I can't tell you how many times kids have called me mom. And, or, or they've said something about a white person not realizing, hey, I'm that person, you know, because it doesn't matter. Kids are not racist. Children are not racist. African-American people could never afford to go to, to go to an orchestra. I didn't go to an orchestra. I don't remember when the first time I went to an orchestra was. They've um, attended Blue Lake Fine Arts Camp and they've met kids from all over the world. Um, their music with Flo Paterni have taken them to, into areas that they never would have been able to experience. Um, the Detroit Symphony Orchestra musicians have embraced these kids, mentoring them. I participated in some programs with them and we went out and played at other places like in Lansing at the state capitol and at other schools and it was really, really fun. They're meeting professional people, you know, something that they never would have experienced. Okay, this has been a wonderful ride, just wonderful. I've become so close with many of the parents of the children that I teach. Two of my closest friends are parents, or grandparent in one particular case, of students that I teach. 
I met her kids, her husband, and she has these beach parties with all her violin students. So all the families came together and it was like a musical community. And that's what I really love about Miss Paternity. She just hugs the kids, hugs the parents, kisses the kids. And my daughter's like, oh, she's just like a grandma. So it was just beautiful. She's a beautiful person and she's just, she just made you feel like family. My husband takes a day off of work and my two children come and they're very excited and one helps with the boat and you know one will grab the kids and play in the sand or move the picnic tables and dance with the kids and they bring their own music. To see teachers outside of the school and outside of the, the education facility that we're in, it's great to actually see her outside with her own family, with her husband, it's just great. They feel very comfortable in calling me for this reason and that. I just think it's just the nature of being in music. She's been in my life, uh, known me since I was eight, and now I'm not going to say how old I am, but I'll just say that she's known me most of my life. One of my students, Tanya Bennett, started when she was in the third grade. She didn't want to play cello. It was big and it was heavy. She had to carry it back and forth. She put the cello in my hand. I never had heard of a cello until she introduced me to it. Um, I guess that I had been tested and she said that I had a good ear. I didn't know that because I knew nothing about music. But um, she asked me if I, what instrument I wanted to play. I said, oh, I want to play the drums, of course, because I had seen Bobby Brady on, on a Brady Bunch doing that. And yeah, I just figured that was the, the instrument to play. She said, well, let me, let me give you a cello. And I thought, a cello? I don't know what that is. But I took the time to like learn from her and it was a great experience. I'm so appreciative for that opportunity because I would never have gotten to where I am now. Now I get a chance to teach others how to play and it's all because someone taught me and she just absolutely inspired me. She got her master's degree before I did. We have run into each other playing for events like Aretha Franklin. I um, got an opportunity to start contracting for gospel artists and got a chance to call her for a really big event. She hasn't changed one bit. When I was in elementary school and now that I'm an adult, I'm a parent, she's the exact same. She's the exact same, teaching the exact same thing and just turning out all these great musicians. She's a dynamo. She's a spark plug. Uh, uh, she's a motivator, she's a generator, uh, she gets these kids excited about playing. She, Flo is one that will pick up the phone and call the superintendent or the emergency financial manager's office if she needs to. Uh, she will call Lansing, she will call whomever she feels can help her to get what she needs for her kids to continue to make music. We've had the hip hop, we've had Motown, but to do the classical music for a young black urban child, that was kind of unheard of. So we're venturing into an area that we have, would never have been able to experience. You know, we have that, that bond because she put that instrument in my hand and it's become my life's passion. I want to tell Ms. Paterni thank you. Thank you so much for helping my daughter and I. Um, as far as not with just learning how to play the violin, but giving us the opportunity to learn something together to bring us a lot closer.